Yeah. Take a break. We got uh, Branstein here to talk about uh, his travels in Haiti. Yeah. Yes. For real? And sad situation. Yeah. It really is. Definitely. Not in Haiti, but have you been to Haiti or no? No. Well, I'm surprised. I, mean, I was going to go. Microphone. Could, oh. is, that, is that on? I was going to go, but I didn't. Uh, I, I truly was looking into going right probably February. but uh, This is the best time to go. It is. You're going to get yeah, a lot yeah. of uh, deals. Yeah. Well, there's some incredible airline deals to Haiti right now. Yes. Oh uh, I actually checked the minute after I heard about it. The uh, American <laughs> Airlines had a deal for first class from L.A. to Port-au-Prince for $1,400. Wow. <laughs> I thought I'll just buy it just to come to New York. That's Yeah, right? <laughs> that's pretty cheap. But that's the penalty. They don't let you off yeah. the plane. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Next stop, put a prince. Yeah. Wow. No, I haven't been there yet, though, but uh, it's a pretty sad situation. Who's the president in Haiti? It's uh, Jean Preval. Right. Uh, Rene and Preval. Rene Preval. Rene, Rene, that's but right. But the, the guy who was the president before, Aristide, to give you an idea of how bad it is, mm. He left, and the country that he went to after Haiti was Congo. Think about that. Ooh. To go, if, if you're going to get exiled from a country, and the country they send you to is the Congo, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's pretty bad, yeah. Why, why is it, uh, well, why don't we should take a break and come back? Yeah, because I really want to get okay, into I it with Jonathan, because uh, Jimmy has told some legendary stories about you, Jonathan. Uh -oh. Yeah. And we want to get it into what's going on in the front of your pants, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> a lot of stuff, Ian. Oh, boy. Trust and, uh, me, Ian, Ian, you're going to want to be around for this one. Yes. I want to hear We're going to now give you an exclusive, my friend. That's uh -oh. what we do today. Opie and Anthony, Jim Norton, uh, Jonathan, and Ian Halpert. Okay. Okay. And uh, Jonathan's in the corner. Jim Norton's uh, manager. We all know Jonathan. Hello. We love this fucking guy. <laughs> He's completely insane. Yeah. How many weeks vacation you get a year from? I mean, you're it, you're your own boss, basically, yeah, right? Yeah. It's funny because I don't take that many weeks off. It's just. But every time you have a week, you yeah. really you really yeah. take advantage of that week and do something pretty pretty crazy. Yeah. I I for example, last year I went to Cambodia for three days. For a weekend, that was that was long. Uh, Any longer than three days, and it just seems like you're there forever. <laughs> you know, it does actually. It's yeah. that 19 hour flight to Bangkok. What but, did you uh, like about Cambodia? Uh, <sighs> Cambodia was nice. The jungle was interesting. I met some guys from the Khmer Rouge. That was pretty cool. Oh, there you um, go. Yeah, I slept in the jungle. That was neat. Um, uh, this is the guy I rely on for career advice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I met some guys from the Khmer Rouge. Are you, getting, <laughs> you must get all the shots. Yeah, I have everything now. Pretty much yeah. everything. There's not a shot you don't have? Uh, no, I've got everything. In fact, I'm planning to go to the Ivory Coast in uh, probably a month. Ooh. And uh, so, yeah, I had to just get uh, some kind of another hep like hepatitis you know, tea or whatever. Yeah, some <laughs> kind of... Man, I bet that's far down. Yeah. Like, I've got A, B, C, and D now. It's, yeah. Uh, S was the last one, yeah. It's the, the type of hepatitis you can only get if a monkey shifts directly into your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, and and you were just showing Anthony and I pictures of you in Afghanistan. Yeah, in Kabul, which is uh, an interesting place. Y Anthony would like it because it's it's uh, it's the gun capital of the world, I think. Uh, the the pictures you were showing me were fantastic. Like yeah. everybody is just toting around AK forty sevens. Yeah, yeah. If you want to see guns, and I mean a lot of guns, go there. <laughs> a lot of guns. But yeah. he went actually recently and as just as a citizen. You didn't go yeah, in no, the military. I, I didn't I didn't go with the I've had clients go who uh you know like like Jim's gone before. Well yeah, you went to some yeah, events yeah, right. and things like but that. In that case, I think it's more like you go in a bubble, you know, because you go um uh you know, with the US military, you fly into the base. No, I, I flew uh from Dubai to Kabul on Safi Airways. Oh, my which, God. oh that's, that's which, the only uh, one I fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Never Safi insane. Airways. There's, it's nothing like it. You leave at 3.30 in the morning, which uh, is pretty amazing. Pretty uh, scary, too, I would Yeah, it's, it's, seeing the people check in is like, the, it's, it's a combination of commandos mercenaries and the watch list you know um they i mean and there's there's like no women on the flight you know one or two and that's it and usually they're like an aid worker or something but mostly it's it's uh command guys in you know cargo pants and you know real tight shirts and uh uh or guys with you know that look like they're well, was it a nice new uh, dc10 <laughs> uh no it wasn't it, it was a, a 707 <laughs> no it was a tupolev uh <laughs> do you know what that is 
Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it actually wasn't the Tupolev. That, that's the Russian, Russian plane. That's Cami yeah. Airways. That's the other airline. That's that's the one they said you probably don't want to fly Cami. Um, so you know we flew it's bad Safi. If you, have, if you have old Aeroflot planes, yes, like yes, those. Right. That's you know, is I uh, might not want to be on this thing. <laughs> when you when you land in Kabul, the first thing you see are a line of broken Soviet helicopters, all there on the tarmac. Uh, you know, they're, just, they're sort of like relics it's, from the good old days. Yeah, yeah. from the good old days. Exactly. I, I just sat next to a soldier uh, going from Chicago to New York and he just talked my ears off. He said this war is really called Desert now Booty. You know how it feels. Desert Booty. He said everyone, it's all about cash there and all about getting laid. He said everyone's fucking each other's brains out. You say there was only men on your plane, but I think if you go deeper right in there, he said all that there is to do there is to fuck. Really? In Afghanistan? Yeah, he said everyone's fucking each other. He said because you have the French you soldiers. You mean guys are... Yeah, he said... <laughs> oh, that's he possible. Said all the, all the four, you know... No, 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 there's a lot of chicks there, man. A lot are of there? hot chicks uh, from France who okay, are soldiers yeah, the, from all over the place. He said everyone's fucking each other's brains out. They're barely even the, concentrating on combat. The, there are okay. He's he's not incorrect. There are a lot of hot girls there. Actually, uh, they're journalists. They work for NGOs. There's there's guys who uh, I mean women who uh, work for embassies and whatnot. But it's a pretty small amount of people. I mean, if you're in the military, I don't know how you're coming in contact with those people because. You're not really allowed off the base. Um, I have a friend who's in the U.S. military who who was probably about 40 minutes from where I was. I called him on the phone. I wanted to see him. For him to leave the base was incredibly difficult. He said, I, you could come here, but it'll take a while to get the permission. And, and It was a nightmare. I don't know how those guys get off the base and... Well, a lot, a lot of it's on the base because you have all these international uh, Not delegations on the US, no, there. Maybe, maybe on the one base on the on the what they call the ISAF. That's the International Security Assistance Force. That's the NATO. Uh, yeah, dude, he base, told me but, this is called Desert Booty. He said he's never got so much pussy in his whole life. I uh, maybe in this war he keeps going back and back. He said the only reason really? why he goes back can't get laid in his own country over there. He's cleaning up. Tell him about your two hour ride into the. He just took a two hour ride into the into uh, deep into Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. I went to the uh, Panjshir Valley. Valley, which is where uh, I might get a little esoteric here for you, but it's where Ahmed Shah Massoud is born, who's the national hero of Afghanistan. He's the guy that led the Northern Alliance. He was killed September 9th, 2001. Um, he was killed by the guys who posed as uh, journalists. They were really Al Qaeda guys. Um, I, I went there. Oh, the trick camera? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They got that guy with the old trick camera. <laughs> the old trick camera the old, routine. The old carnation that uh, you squeeze the <laughs> little ball and the bullet goes off. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 I, he was born in this place called the Panjshir Valley. And um, it's funny because when you had the little kid on who's on the terrorist watch list, and he kept saying, I'm not a tourist, terrorist, whatever. I had a situation where I met the governor of the Panjshir province. Um, we, we got to go have tea with him. And... Uh, he, I find out really basically he's a warlord because I asked the driver. I said, "How long? When was he elected?" And he said, "Oh, a while ago." I said, "Well, when does his term end?" He goes, "When he want, <laughs> when he wanted to end." <laughs> and I, oh, okay, ah, I see. So you realize he's he's kind of a warlord, and um, we we're sitting there with him, and and uh, we were talking, and and he kept saying, "I'm proud that the, the, the translator was saying, I'm very proud that there's no tourists in the Panjshir. There will never be tourists in the Panjshir." <laughs> I said, "Really, you're really proud of the fact there's no tourists here?" And then he looked at me because the guy translated it back, and then I, he looked at the guy, and I thought, "Oh, he's going to kill the interpreter now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there he goes. so I leave because I realized it suddenly hit me. He meant terrorists. Oh shit! So. Uh, yeah, but it, it, it was so an amazing were, thing. So you were in a place no one goes. <laughs> Not no one. I wouldn't well, say. Uh, well, I mean, most Americans. Most don't Americans, go. Most Americans no, 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 especially and, Jewish and, Americans. And, <laughs> yeah, and it, <laughs> took, and it took two hours. I, I want to slow down it's the about, story a little bit. It okay. took two hours to get there. Yeah, it's were like, you scared out of your fucking mind? You no, know how you got a car. You got okay, we were really lucky. Um, someone had arranged for us to go there. Sounds like luck. Uh, the, the, um, it was actually someone in the Afghan government arranged for us to go there, so they sent us this ridiculous armored car. Which the funny thing is, when you're in Kabul, what you want to do is be low key. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's usually the cars that have all the crazy escorts and the guys with the guns in the back and all that. That's to me, that's the stupid. That's that's the stupid thing to do. Uh, we you know, but so here we, and and we, when we were in Kabul, we were always in low key kind of cars. Our bodyguards weren't carrying AK forty sevens; they were carrying uh, you know handguns. But the 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 guys who picked us up to take us to the Panjshir, 
Okay, they they show up in this ridiculous Toyota Forerunner that is. It's like the window was three inches thick. There's no back window. It's just a, a porthole. Um, you know, the thing is blacked out. I thought, oh, okay, this is cool. And as we pulled out of the hotel, a car comes in front of us, and another car comes behind us, and I hear a siren, and I realize, oh, no. There's about five military guys in a Toyota flatbed truck. Toyota never thought those trucks would be used for this, I think, <laughs> with the machine gun mount in the back, you know, sort of Taliban style. Um but we had a, an armed escort in front of us and in back of us, and we were like this for two hours. And the funny thing was, is we kept driving through the countryside to get there. People kept saluting because I think they thought someone, you know, was important in the car. Someone important is yeah. just. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I feel like Zelig, you know. I'm, I'm sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> look at me. I'm, <laughs> this is just one of those things. But uh, it's a two-hour drive. You go through some. Uh, the funny thing was. When you get to the Panchir, it looks like Aspen. I'm not kidding. It's a beautiful place, beautiful valley streams. Um, there's no houses or anything. So it's sort of like Aspen maybe 50 years ago. What you do see, the only thing you see is kind of like a museum, of, a war museum, because there's tanks, burned out tanks everywhere from the Soviet days. Um, cause what the, the, the Mujahideen, what they did was they would shoot the tanks from above in these positions in the mountains. So that's the only thing you really see that sure. are these burned out tanks. They've been stripped clean of everything they can possibly be stripped of. There's nothing left of them. Just the shell. But, um, yeah, I wasn't that scared in the Panjshir, actually. It was more scary going into the hotel um, in, in Kabul because, and actually the week I, the week after I was there, they rocketed the hotel. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was... That, that, That's that, good. But it takes 25 minutes to get into the hotel. That's the thing. You you um, It has a 25-foot high steel wall, and you pass through three checkpoints in the street. Then when you get up to the, the, uh, the main gate... The guy comes to the car and asks you crazy questions like, uh, you know, where are you from? Um, what college did you attend? Things that, I, you know, I guess they're trying to throw sort of terrorists off. Um, so we answered the questions, and then and then the steel gate opens. It slides open, and you drive in, and then there's another gate in front of you. So now that gate behind you closes, uh, so you're sort like of an trapped. Airlock, yeah. yeah, then you have to get out of the car, and guys come, two guys come with mirrors. They come with this, this. it's like a wand that ble- it has all these lights on it. They're, they're waving it all over the car. I, I, I'm assuming it looks for some kind of bomb. Mm. You go in a separate room where they 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 check you out, you know, they go they search you down, they they uh, search all your luggage. Ooh. There's an airport screening kind of thing. So that that took about every time you went in and out of the hotel 20 25 minutes. What a pain in the ass. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I guess, you know. Why do you have a death wish? Do <laughs> no, I don't have a death wish. The hotel you were in a week later was bombed. That's ah, a death wish. Yeah. Did you did you have a problem on the way when you were driving in the fucking uh when you guys got like into a fender bender? Yeah, we did actually. Didn't want to get uh, into a Jim's right. Fender there. On the way, <laughs> just have insurance. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the funny thing was, we were we're driving into the Panchir, and and it gets mountainous at one point, and we're on this road, and this car slid into us, and it wasn't that big of a deal. It was sort of like uh, you could hear his wheels spinning out, and then he just kind of bumped into us, basically from the side, and. I went, whoa, and then everybody, the, the guy goes, stay in the car, stay in the car. And the, the guy in the front seat got out. and Just opened all, fire on the guy. Well, that was the thing. I, yeah. I thought, oh, boy. And then all the soldiers start running out. All the guy, you know, the, the bodyguards start running out with the guns. I'm going, oh, man, this is not good. And it all happened so fast. And I'm thinking, you know, this guy, it was an accident. I mean, it didn't even occur to me. And then the person sitting next to me said, it could be the first uh, diversion to throw them off. And uh-huh. I went, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's like, yeah, th- maybe that is. And then you get real scared. And then, of course, uh, they all got out and about 20, 25 minutes passed. They make sure the guy was okay and they let the guy go. And, uh, I mean, that was the, probably the scariest moment, uh, on that ride out to the. You just, you don't think about, you know, Gosh. Daniel Pearl and things yeah, like exactly. that and getting your head. <laughs> Are, are, are you married? Are you married? I'm married. Yeah. What does your wife think of this? Well, like, this was uh, the funny thing was this was two weeks before our wedding. Uh, oh man, that I went. You, you really love this chick a lot. <laughs> Let me ask you: Did you know there's any synagogues out, out there? There's one. Really? There really is one. You, yeah. went, you went on Shabbos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's one. And it, the funny thing was, there's one Jew in Kabul. There used to be two. The funny thing about these two guys, 
they hated each other. Okay. <laughs> figures. So like most, most Jews, in, figures. Most they Jews hated are the each biggest other. anti-Semites. In fact, we, we went and we met the guy, and he, he said... Uh, way to be low-key, an armored vehicle, and meet the one Jew in Kabul. <laughs> yeah. way, to, way to keep it under your hat. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the guy we met, you know, the, the, the Jewish guy, he lives in the synagogue there. And... When we brought up the fact, hey, what about the uh, the other guy? You know, he goes, oh, him. Ugh, why do you have to bring him up? <laughs> Literally. I mean, they're in the place with the Taliban, the whole thing. The only two guys from the same clan, they hate each other. How come they're not killed? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't think the Taliban so, harassed them big time when they were in power, but they didn't kill them. Um, and I think, I, I, I don't think they're killed because I don't think people care that much. I mean... I think, I mean, for what it's worth, you know, there's 28 million people in Afghanistan. There's something like 20, 25,000 Taliban. That's it. I mean, mm. yeah. I mean, all the, the rest are upstanding citizens. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I think the Jews should or take over there. The two dealers. Jews should start an uprising and let's make this yeah. a holy shrine. No, there's only one now. That's the thing. Yeah, there's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. There, uh, did you marry a Jew, by the way? No. Good boy. <laughs> no, seriously. What about you, Castro? You, I want to hear the Castro story again from you. The Castro story? Is it? Well, I don't want to give away the punchline, but uh, you went. You met uh, Fidel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I met him in. Uh, I met him twice actually. The first time was uh, during the film festival in Cuba. Uh, in, yeah, because that's normal. Go to yes. Cuba for a, uh, a yeah. film festival, yeah, and then <laughs> he just says it casually, like, "Yeah, you've gone, right?" Yeah. The second time, I went down with a bunch of you know big Hollywood uh, executives and. Uh, we met, uh, we had lunch with him. We had this six hour lunch with, uh, Fidel. And, uh, it was amazing. I mean, uh, he, uh, what were we talking about Cuba earlier, I think? Or, uh, I can't remember what it was anyway. But, um, yeah, it, that, it was an incredible, uh, he, uh, he was a fan of the Sopranos, we found out. Uh, <laughs> oh, who wasn't, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, he asked if we knew the actor Gerard Depardieu, and he thought he was very funny. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, there's nothing like sitting around a table full of the most powerful people in Hollywood, and they're asked a question like that. Do you know the actor Gerard Depardieu? He's very funny. Everyone went, uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. All right. Yeah, yes, sure. uh, Presidente. Yeah. You know, you know, yes, Comandante. You know, I, I broke a big Castro story last year in the New York Post. I did a documentary oh, yeah. on Cuba. Barbara and, Walters, that's what it was. And you could Google this. I said, have you ever heard how many chicks Castro slept with? Oh, it's a lot, I'm guessing. 35,000. Google it. It's all over. You Google <laughs> me on. and Castro, you'll see it. 35,000 well, well, chicks. Now, I remembered what I was going to say now earlier, which was you were talking about Barbara Walters. Yeah. There's a rumor about her and... Uh, and Fidel? Yeah, Fidel. It wouldn't sure. surprise me. Yeah. He, he likes the... He group. loved her. Muammar Gaddafi, <laughs> too, man. That guy, yeah. whenever a foreign uh, journalist would come in, he'd bring her into the tent, entertain her, you know, slip something in her drink, and then she'd wake up, you know... Barbara Walters and Oriana Falachi. The only two... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, 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 Who's your fucking pen pal? This is who he writes to. Oh, uh, the, uh, General Noriega. <laughs> uh, they write each other. <laughs> yeah. He fucking writes to Noriega and he writes yeah. back. It's, well, it's let, me, let me tell you how it started. I, I wanted to give a friend of mine a gift. I wanted to get a... <laughs> so Ian, Noriega likes uh, getting that pussy? Oh, I don't know about Noriega, man. Like, geez. I, I wanted to Are get a Facebook gift. Facebook friends with him? Too? No, no, no. I, I wanted to get a gift for a friend of mine who, who's a you know very wealthy guy who's got everything, he's a lot of things. And I thought, what can I get him that's special? And we'd been talking about uh, Panama. We'd been talking about Noriega. And I, I said, I, you know, I, what, what is, what's happening with the guy? So I realized he's still in jail. And uh, this is something that a lot of people don't realize. He's still in jail, and I don't know why, because he served his sentence. The sentence is over. He was sentenced to, uh, I think it was 20 years. He did the full 20, and he's still there. He did the full 20, but the, but the interesting thing was this. So I, I said, well, I'm going to take a chance. So I bought his book, and uh, I, I, I wrote him a letter. I sent him the book, and I thought, uh, we'll see what happens. Sure enough, he sent me the book back. He signed it. Uh, you know, he wrote in it, those who do not learn the past, uh, uh, condemned to repeat it. Condemned to repeat yeah. it, yeah. And, uh, General Manuel Antonio Noriega. What I found out was this. He, uh, he's in Florida. He's in Miami still. He 
wears his uniform, I think, every day because he's technically a prisoner of war, so he's allowed to. Uh, he's, he gets all the things, you know, that are accorded to people under the Geneva Convention, uh, you know, war prisoners or whatever. Um, he has to be called General Noriega still, <laughs> <laughs> wow. which, which must piss off the the, the uh, you know prison guards. I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, generally, you're ready for your meal. Uh, yeah, but he uh, and so then anyway, I, I thought, well, this is so nice, and I felt bad because he had to pay for the postage for the book. So um, I didn't know if he worked in the commissary or what. So uh, so I sent him back a uh, a note with a with well I sent him back a note saying hey listen do I owe you money for the postage thank you you know he wrote me back no don't worry about it all is okay so then I said this is nice so then I I read this great book called uh, a Panama Fever by Matthew Parker and I, I said oh I'm going to send it to him see what he thinks so I sent him the book then he wrote me this long note back about you know see Theodore Roosevelt who took Panama blah 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 <laughs> this crazy rambling note. And and then uh, it started that way. That was the, the how the pen pal uh, started. Uh, so we kind of write each other back and forth. And uh, I went to Panama last July. And uh, it's interesting. They it's a tough question. They don't like Noriega there, but then people will tell you. But things ran a little better. Uh, like Iraq, man. Yeah, love him or hate him. It ran with Saddam Hussein. Yeah, yeah. So you mean Iraq with Saddam Hussein? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pete texted me. Uh oh. Have him tell the story about the guy he helped out of Cuba with. Oh, that story is. Uh, oh, let's hear it. Come on. Is, is Pete is Pete setting you up for not a good story? Uh, yeah, no, it's just so boring. Okay. Well, no, you're worried you're going to get busted here. You no, 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 no. Let's hear it. Yeah. No, I didn't do anything illegal. Did he get cigars? From no, we we. Uh, it's a long story. He but got uh, cigars from Fidel Castro. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to? Okay, all right. I, I'm not sure if we told this one on the. I don't know. If, all right. So we all went and uh we got at the end of the lunch we're sitting there and and I see them roll out this this tray and I'm looking at them going whoa look at all the cigars there's boxes of cigars and the kind of cigars that he's only allowed to give out they're made specifically for him so if you think about people who know Cuban cigars these are the best of the best you know and uh they bring out this box and they roll it in and and I'm like oh man I can't believe it sure enough he gives us this box of, he gives us each a box of cigars I'm like, this is incredible. I, I think quick on my feet. I put him right in front of him with a pen. He signs the box. Wow. Okay. So now we've got a signed box of amazing Cuban cigars from Peter. I come back and, um, uh, David, who I work with, who Jim knows, um, has this big humidor in his office. And, uh, I, I, I'm like, well, I'm going to store them in here. So I put them in there. And at the time, David was 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 traveling quite a bit, and his assistant Tanner was sending him cigars everywhere he was going. So she would just take the cigars out of the box, put them in a, a plastic thing, and FedEx them to wherever he was going. You know, cause he would smoke them like crazy. So one day I go in there to look, and I go, oh no, where's my cigars? <laughs> she she actually, <clears throat> yeah, without looking at the box, even though I'd put a note on them uh, saying do not touch, you know, do not, in you know, big letters, whatever. She didn't pay attention. She took the cigars, she threw them in the envelope, sent them to him. He smoked them all, and she threw the box away. <laughs> oh, <my> <laughs> that that oh. is a, a horror story. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. 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 Oh. Were you upset? I, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say. I, I, she left the office that day. She was so scared. <laughs> did you cry? I didn't. I, would, cry. I think I would almost cry. I almost did. Yeah. It doesn't it, get better. You than, can't get those again. Right. You can't get. Yeah. Where are you getting? I'm gonna get again? cigars from Fidel Castro with a signed fucking it, cigar box. Just, just purely. I think something like that is yeah, worse. My, my well, signed this is what I was Babe Ruth say. rookie card. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a signed box just like that sold at an auction last year for, or no. Four years ago, for twenty five thousand, that was four years ago. Guess four what? Years I can't ago. imagine now? what they'd be now. And if if he dies in the next year or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. way up, right? Think Damn. about it. Yeah. yeah, in the garbage. In the garbage. The, I said, "Did you save the box?" No, I threw it away. Ah, you know, it was just. Uh, oh oh yeah. God! And it Damn. wasn't that day. Obviously, it wasn't recently. Or it had been weeks before something she had done it. Yeah, that was the thing. It wasn't like I could run to the garbage. You know, by then the, it was way too late. Yeah, it was way too late. That box is somewhere now. Did you like Cuba? Yeah. I love the, the music. Yeah. Amazing, right? music's incredible. The best trumpet yeah. player in the world, and the pussy, and the pussy. <laughs> Let's not forget about the pussy. This, this guy went probably went to the the airport in the wheelchair, right? Because those chicks are hot. <laughs> a lot of pussy down there. A lot there, of right? beautiful yeah. women in Cuba. Yeah, a lot you know of the world's women. best trumpet player, Arturo Sandoval. D Dizzy Gillespie discovered him. He's from Cuba, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no. he's amazing. But when when was the last time you were there? Ah, uh, God, uh, it was a while ago. D did you fuck a Cuban broad? Seriously, tell us. No, I, no, I don't hum and uh, Did you get laid? Bottom line. 
I had fun in Cuba. There you go. All right. I had fun in Cuba. <laughs> Cuba is an amazing Did country. you wear an umbrella? Or is there some Cuban kids you have there? I, I don't think I have any children in Cuba. And you're a negligent dad. <laughs> 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 hey, Jonathan. Yeah. You also told uh, Jimmy and I about how when you go to some of these places, I forgot which one you were talking about, you get on some of these uh, planes where they make stops and people get off. And, oh, yeah. And they, they bring livestock on the plane, yeah. if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I, I was in uh, West Africa. In West the, Africa. In the go. Sahara. And I flew from Timbuktu to uh, Bamako, Mali. And the thing about it was, when I got on the plane, uh, the first thing that you notice when you go through the airport, I had a, I had literally, you'll appreciate this, Anthony, I had, I had a bag of knives uh, that I had bought <laughs> yeah, and, um, nice. from these cool Tuareg guys that I met. And uh, so I, I said, okay, I go through the security thing, and I, I, they didn't have a conveyor belt to put your luggage on. It just had the thing you walk through. And the guy just marched, motioned to me. He said, yeah, just put the bag down. And I, I put the bag down. I walked through it. He he wands me. And he says, okay, you're fine. I said, what about the bag? And then he grabs the bag from the other side so it doesn't go through the metal detector and hands it to me. I'm like, great. In on it. <laughs> but now I'm on the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to get on the plane. And as you're about to get on the plane, these guys come running up to you to sell you all sorts of stuff. And the, f the best thing that I found that you can buy on the runway in, uh, in Timbuktu is about a, is a 10 inch dagger that I bought. Okay, this is after the security. Yeah, this is like the gift shop. The, 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 <laughs> well, the, the 10 inch dagger that I bought right before I got on the airplane. So I get on the airplane and then this, this woman makes a, a loud noise. I hear some yelling at the front and, and I'm on a, I think it was like a dash eight or something, you know, the kind, uh, it's a propeller, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I hear this commotion at the front and a woman has a cage with chickens in it and she's bringing it on and she wants to put it in the, there's, not, there's barely any room above you, but she wants to put it above her and, um, she's screaming and yelling because she doesn't want the chickens to go under the plane and, uh, finally they, they let her on and then, and then comes a guy with a baby goat uh <laughs> yeah uh we got on and i so we're in the air and now i'm thinking all right well uh the flight should it's like an hour i guess and 10 minutes later the guy's like okay we'll be landing soon i'm like what do you mean landing soon what i found out was this is like a bus it stops in six places before <laughs> you get shit. yeah yeah so they say take off and landing is the most dangerous part so you i'm thinking deal with that six, yeah, times. six times Holy you know t it's the only time i took a xanax uh, <laughs> because I, I i literally like i'm okay with flying this freaked me out like okay six landings and takeoffs yeah what are the odds you're going to make all of them you know <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know and, and and the first one we land at you realize that's dirt. There's no runway. Yeah. It's dirt. And, and, uh, and I'm thinking, the security at the airport in Timbuktu is bad. What's it like in Mopti? Okay. <laughs> you know, or Jene, where you're nothing, landing. Nothing. Yeah, right? nothing. I mean, it, it, you know, it's a guy with a, like a dashiki on and, and, and he's got a flashlight. You know, that's, uh, you know, so he's like this with the plane, you know, like waving it in. Thinking, oh, that's the, that's the symbol of authority here. You're a modern day adventurer. Uh, You're an adventurer. You know, those Zopi things said, were gone in like the early 1900s. Want, I, this guy wants the diamond. No, I yeah, don't. He, got got no, he wants to live. No, 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 no. He's living. I'll tell you, I went to, uh, Is I went, your mother still alive? Yeah. Man, she she must be freaking out at home. Well, when I went to, you, she, you must have I don't know, you must have been ignored or something. In no, 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 dude, dude, seriously, your mom, your what did your parents do to deserve this? I, they're cool with it for the most part. The yeah. only part they're He's living his life. The I, only I part have respect for John. Yeah, the the, the only part they have a hard Cuba time with is it was a place like Afghanistan or. But but I'll tell you this, the craziest place. Uh, Totally, un I mean, this yeah. I've never. The only time I ever did this was on a total whim. Go someplace. Uh, usually, I think about it where I want to go, and you know what I want to do. A little research yeah. and whatever, right? On a total whim, I was in. Uh, I went to Moscow. Okay, but that wasn't the whim, but we we had like uh, I think it was six days, and we were kind of getting. I knew that six days would be kind of too well, what long. What year? What year? Set the stage. Here. Two thousand. It might have been two thousand. All right. And we said, what should we do? What should we do? We have, we have, I was with a buddy of mine. I said, we, we have like six days. Six days is too long in Moscow. So let's go somewhere in the region. So we did this thing where you, you ever play that game when you're a kid where you put your finger on the map, you close your eyes, and you, you just. did that in <laughs> Grace. We oh. did that. I went to Yerevan, Armenia. Oh. Okay. The only country where when you get there, every person you meet, it doesn't matter who they are, the first question, why are you here? Why are you here? Oh my God. Every single question was like that. No one could understand why we went there. You have family here? No, no family. Pointed at a man. Why you come here? Why you come here? Why you come to Yerevan? 
Everybody there was asking us a question. I, 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 it got to the point that we, I said, let's go. We left the day early. We flew back, and we left, and it was a horrible snowstorm because this was in February. And I remember when the guy, when we were landing, because that was the thing. You got to the airport, and all the other airlines were closed. Aeroflot was still out, uh, uh, <laughs> still flying. That's right. And I said, "Oh boy, this is not going to be good." And I was real nervous. And the guy was talking on his cell phone next to me, and miraculously getting reception for most of the flight. As we landed, we're about to land. The um, the they the we went down, and then you ever been on a plane when they they like abort the the landing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's crazy. Uh, it was horrible. Missed approach. Up and down. <laughs> yeah, terrifying. No. And then the pilot said something like, "All right, we're going to try again." Oh yeah. And Shit. you just the word "try" and "land" is the same. <laughs> we yeah. will try this again. We try again. Don't you worry. Uh, they speak in English. Yeah, well, they do an announcement first in Russian, and then okay. they do it in in a you know a few uh, languages. Uh, Miss uh, Airport, try again. So you travel a lot, aviation yeah. language. Hey, Ian, you didn't ask him about the Moscow pussy. Well, no, okay. I, I got. Here he go. travels a lot. What's your monthly bill for hookers? Seriously, <laughs> I don't know. My monthly bill for hookers? Yeah, come on, all you guys. No, are yeah, yeah. You know, in West Africa, let me tell you, yeah. it, it, it's great because there's a there's a, some great bars where all the truckers go in uh, West Africa who go along the uh, Trans African Highway. Which is nice because, I mean, it's safe there, I figured, you know, it's pretty safe to me. I love how you just figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> he just figures, Jimmy. Jonathan doesn't do anything sexual. He makes scrapbooks when he comes home, but he fucking tapes matches in giant uh, scrapbooks. Uh, I have these, yeah, well, I keep a journal when I'm there. And so I, 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 I tape everything into it. You know, like if I get a receipt from the airport, you know, I write it in there. When we went to, uh, when I we went to Vietnam, uh, my, my, well, my, not my wife, my girlfriend at the time had, uh, she, she had, uh, she needed some tampons. Could not find the kind she wanted. We looked all over the place. And she got so mad at me because the only kind they had were this awful brand called Helen Harper. And, uh, I, I remember I cut out the, it's a picture of a woman on it, this, this, you know, horrible looking woman. And I cut out the box so that it was flat and I taped it in my journal. She goes, why are you saving that? I said, because this is a good memento from Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, the time you were on your period, you're cranky. <laughs> yeah. did, did you fuck her when she had her period? You like fucking uh, chicks one day? Oh, God. <laughs> no, seriously. People oh, get it. Fuck <laughs> <is wrong. laughs> Stephen has from Basher, now people do Armenian lines. Armenian stewardesses are known for their tan labias. Really? 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 Look it up. Look, look it up. Labias and Ian Helper on Google. You'll see that. Armenian. Armenian. Uh, Jesse Ventura say. <laughs> Fucking Ian. Mike Paint. You didn't get, to, you didn't get into the Moscow pussy. I'm uh, really yeah. surprised by you, Ian. Moscow's insane. Yeah, it's an, I was there it's in, insane. before the wall fell down and all yeah. that, man. I was taking taxes. I was there, too, uh, before the wall fell. Wasn't yeah. that wild? I was there. Yeah, it was Dude, crazy. When Leningrad was... I know, was there when it was Leningrad, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I used to take taxis there. Mm -hmm. I'd give the guy a Beatles tape, a cassette. You know, remember you just happen to have them? Those eight, I used to bring them because a taxi driver will take you all day for a pair of jeans. Ask him. Or, you, you, or a Beatles tape. They, they were, yeah, the black market, <laughs> yeah. things like that. You could trade things. You know, I went there in 1986 was the first time. When I uh, came back in, uh, I think it was 2000, the profound differences. You know, I remember, like, you could trade jeans, and then, you know, in 2000... Who's a, it was Andropov then? Who, who was the... No, no, Gorbachev. No, I'll tell you. Gorbachev. Gorbachev. I was there yeah, Gorbachev. And that was a cum stain on his head, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Google it. Google it. <laughs> really, it was a cum really, stain on really, his head. Really, really. Look it up on Google. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Scott, <laughs> Gorby. People drink it out there, Dave. <laughs> did, did, did you get laid in Moscow in 86? <laughs> honestly? Uh, we, uh, no. You did? I didn't, no. Well, you were a Jewish Communist nurse, pussy. but they wouldn't touch you? You're, you're the only Jew that... I was probably more paranoid then. Why? I don't know. I'm, I'm paranoid about well, diseases. That was the time of... What's, <laughs> diseases. His, what's his name? Sharansky and all those people making headlines. It wasn't cool yeah. for a Jew to go there, man. They weren't too kind to the... the I've never really listened right, to listen, that. You um, know. Uh, people want to know if you're a CIA spy. Yeah, yeah, I, I, everyone I, asked me. I've been obsessed with knowing yeah. if he's fucking... If he's really? sending uh, weapons. You got you, a spy. A spy. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's Google so funny it. CIA. <laughs> spy. If you, yeah, that's the problem. If you travel places in the world... Because most people... Have you ever seen in the State Department website when they have no. <laughs> the travel warnings? Oh, no! <laughs> Why would we? If you, you look at them, it? you'll you, and you read them, you basically won't go anywhere. And I just kind of stopped subscribing to that. So naturally, when you go travel places, people think, "Why are you going there? What's the real reason?" 
Hey, I, you know, a lot of the times it's just to check out the music or the people. And, you want to check know. out the world, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever been to South Africa? No. You got to go there. I mean, yeah. Why, Ian? Yeah. What's Hottest wrong? chicks, what? nicest people. <laughs> no, <laughs> South Africa is nice. No, really. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. You know where I want to go is Mozambique. <laughs> you That's know, supposed to be amazing. Before, you know, no, the end of a Mandela married. You just fuck, you know, black chicks <laughs> off the street. Just <laughs> grab them. Oh, <laughs> no, really. No, South really. African South African black African chicks black are chicks. so fucking hot. I fucked hot. with you yeah, in the hot. 80s. Uh, you absolutely have AIDS. Yeah, no kidding. No, look it up. I don't have AIDS. Google. 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 Six umbrellas. Yeah, one shot. Look, are you that you, guy? You, look, you, look, you, you have more you, shot you, again in AIDS. With all due respect to her from the pussy, you're you know Jill Nicolini, man. She's been around the block, Garth. Garth, I'm trying to all these people. Here. Yeah. There's gonna be a, there's gonna be a Jill up update soon. Have you ever licked her toes? Tell me the truth. Have you ever licked her toes? No, no, no. He has a foot guy. Ian, are you that guy that goes that goes to these places and just that's you're just you're that guy. Not, not really. I'm a quiet guy. Uh -huh. uh, okay. You know, I'm. I, just like I, I, have, I have a girlfriend. I'm faithful. I have a kid. Uh, I'm, very, uh, I'm not like you, man. Would you? <laughs> would you? I don't cheat on my would wife. You, would you? Would you? Let's assume Google for a second it. you didn't have a girlfriend or whatever. <laughs> would you? Would you go to Africa? You wouldn't think twice about a. I love black women. Really? Oh man. What do you like about uh, black women? And I like looking them out. I know, but there's you know, a even, real. Even when like, they're even when they're on the rag, seriously, it's so beautiful colors. Oh boy. It's like art. Have you? Look it up. African women. I know this guy loves women. I do love women. It's like chocolate covered cherry. Have, have, have you ever licked out someone when they're on the rag? No, I've Why done a lot we? of dirty things, but I've I've never I've never That's done that. That's true love. But, yeah, I, but, but it even, like pennies. even Jim Norton, I don't think would go to uh, like West Africa, for example. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and mess around with hookers. What's wrong I, with hookers? Ian, I don't mess around with hookers. What's wrong with the locals, man? The clean uh, girls you know, have AIDS. Uh, I, I, yes. I, I, pay, I don't have to pay like Ian. you. I know. All right, Ian. I don't have to pay. <laughs> you're like you're you using that shit as a tax write-off. I don't. I go there. And I, I deal Ian, with the locals. I got a man. job for you. It's called yeah. rape. One more thing, Jonathan, that we need to know. <laughs> yeah. We've all wanted to know. Uh, Ian, ask him about uh, that bulge in the front of his pants. We have to ask how big so, Jonathan's man, pants is. We're not I'm sure if it's a big ball man, or, or if he's packing no, some do you, heat. Do you got the Jewish long man syndrome? Like, <laughs> how long is it? How? <laughs> yeah. Like, my, my, look, I, I'm playing with mine right now, right up here. What was the line uh, Milton Berle used to say? I'll take out just enough to just to, to win. Uh, to, to win, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Bramstein's all cock. You're packing? I think he is. What do you I got? Do okay. What do you got going on, Johnson? <laughs> or is it just that you wear tight pants? We no, can't make no pants that tight make a chicks, dick. Man. It's going to be in the show. Right? <laughs> what are you saying? Of Jewish men are well hung. You're one of them. Admit it. I I do okay. I'm all right. I'm, See, you're, I'm, you're getting it. Have, have you okay. ever dated? Have you ever fucked one of your clients? A lot of these Hollywood simply by managing them. Yes. Them yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I saw that softball lobbed over to Jimmy, man. <laughs> I've always wondered why Jimmy's not further along in his I career. Mean, now I know <laughs> he's too busy traveling the have fucking you ever world. Fucked one of your clients, yes. Jimmy. Uh, too busy. Line? <laughs> Where's the safest place you've been, Jonathan? Yeah. <laughs> the safest right. place. Dude, in this dude, studio. Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> I was a pussy in the safest place. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> safest place. It's... I'm joking. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. That was just a little. Have you ever been shot at? Oh, that's a good question. Look at you. Not talking mm, about no, not really. Although, there was a suicide bomber when I got to Afghanistan, but that was... I mean, that How, how close were you to that? Three blocks. From yeah, a suicide that? bomber? Yeah. And you don't have a death wish. It was the first hour we got there. <laughs> walking wow. through the lobby of the hotel, and you hear boom. And I went, oh, boy, what was that? Someone turned to me and said, that was a bomb. I said, no, come on. Because at first you're like, nah, I can't. Well, what do you expect in Afghanistan? Uh, mm. 20 people killed, 81 wounded. I mean, it was like, you know, wow. the first hour and a half in the country. So uh, Wow. Yeah. But do you then get, the, Jonathan, do you get scared? Yeah, I was scared. Uh, I was scared going there, and uh, I was scared... I wasn't scared surprisingly when that happened. I was more scared uh when we, when the when the car hit us when we were driving uh into you know further in sure. Yeah, that does seem like one of those movie moments where yeah. they get out and just yeah. spray the vehicles with machine gun fire. <laughs> yeah. It was it uh I'm trying to in uh, oh oh in West Africa I got arrested. Well, I got detained um uh, in the train station. <laughs> well, very casually. Yeah. Um, in the train station I got detained and I did something really stupid which was I had been videotaping the train. There's a train that goes from 
uh, well, it starts in Niger, but then it, it basically goes from Bamako, Mali, <laughs> to Dakar, Senegal. Now, I- imagine the train in Schindler's List, and that looks good <laughs> compared to this train, okay? <laughs> Did they hose down the cars? <laughs> uh, uh, let me say, this car, it, it's, it's this. It, there's no lights in them. It's a three-day journey, okay? There's nowhere to go to the bathroom. There's no lights. I mean, you see little kids jumping on and off the train as it's leaving the station. And I, I, I videoed it. I thought, this is just amazing. Look at this. So I videoed it. And then the next thing I know, this guy comes running out. And I'm like, whoa, he's yelling at me, screaming at me. He doesn't care. I mean, like, they got little kids jumping under the tracks, literally, as the train's leaving. He doesn't give a shit about that. He cares only about that I'm videotaping the train leaving. So he grabs me, and uh, he makes me go in the office. And two security guards, or police, whatever they were, these guys come in, and they're yelling at me. And um, the stupid thing I did was he said, uh, finally, like, the one guy was like, okay, just erase everything you shot. And I basically didn't. What I did was I, I rewound it and I erased maybe three seconds of what I shot and then, you know, pretended like I had erased the whole thing because uh, I really didn't want to erase it. And uh, I, he believed me. He he uh, he bought it. But uh, I was I thought, oh, man, I could get arrested here. Like, Speaking of trains, did you ever pull a train when you were there <laughs> <laughs> with like uh, one chick and a bunch of guys? <laughs> Do you, do you cheat on your wife? No. <laughs> no honestly. I don't cheat on my wife. No. No. Look, look at me, because I, I have a good BS detector here. Look I, at me right in the... I've look, been look married... Look, look I've, at me right in the... How long have you been married? Since November. Do you cheat on your wife? No, I don't cheat on my wife. Uh, no, at least not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You believe she, him? Is she hot? Yeah. How old is she? She's 36. How old are you? 42. Well, 41. Sorry, I'll be 42. And does she bang you every night? Is she good? <laughs> what no, are you just whip it out you know what? I, I, off to these I, I, I started answering the questions. So why, did, why did you marry <laughs> her, man? What, 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 it's got to be sex. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what does she do? What, what's her mo- background? You said she's not part of the tribe. What, what is she? Haitian? What, where, where did you pick her Haitian? <laughs> Haitian? No, she's, she's, she's from the what south. The oh, yeah, what what part? So, southern people are nice, but they're very nice. I, I always she, say, I dated a woman from uh, Charlotte. No, from, uh, what's that place in South Carolina, the, that city there? Uh, Charlotte. Columbia. Oh, Port Charleston. Prince. Beautiful. Or Charleston. She used to live in Charleston. Charleston. No, no, Charleston. Hey, hey, hey. Let me tell you, she... There's an expiry date on... Where, where's she, she from? She used to live in Charleston, but... Yeah, uh, see, I told you, all these chicks from Charleston... They all, they're, is she blonde? Yes. She's they're from Arkansas exact originally. Exact same thing, man. They chase rich guys, and there's all... You, man, I hope you have a good lawyer. I'm telling you, tape this. I hope you have a good fucking lawyer. Uh, I've been through this drill. I dated a woman from Charleston yeah. who lived in Nassau for uh-huh. years. In the Bahamas. In the Bahamas. Yeah. Okay, she moved there, and she did really well. But, man... There's an expiry. They know how to fuck. I'll tell you that. But there's an expiry date on these chicks. I, I'm telling you, man. You're gonna maybe th- it was look, you, brother to brother, man. Uh, they couldn't brother take to it. brother, uh, it was just I'm you, a, Ian. I'm from a family of Holocaust survivors, man. The Holocaust is yeah. like, you know, a picnic. Damn, why couldn't it be women. six million one? <laughs> <laughs> no. right. Jonathan, uh, or old taffy bag as I call him. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, uh, I've never seen him fucking hit on chicks. Never. And Jonathan's uh, a very powerful man in Hollywood. What's that. wrong with you? Ian? I thought Jonathan was gay for a while. I really, really? didn't. I, I didn't think you were gay at first because you were, you were so not into like you weren't a pig with chicks. And I met his yeah. girlfriend Dude, and his wife. And no. when, when's this the guy going to be yeah. worldwide? He's known all over the states. He's selling out Atlanta. Good news is that, that's good. He, but you got to hit it. He's going to Haiti. He's going to do. Yeah. He's going to Haiti. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Yes. <laughs> That's where his big comedy connections are. <laughs> what what, what by... about the UK? Because there yeah. seems to be a difference in humor there. Like guys like Lenny Henry and all those guys. I don't get it. I go to those shows in London. I sit there. Everyone's laughing but me in the place. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Is it, I mean... <laughs> Uh, there's a difference, but I think I mean there's people in England that like Jim. And... Uh, have you performed in England? Never. I always said no. Yeah. Why? Because I think the guys that do very well in England are, are the guilty Americans who are like, yeah, Americans are stupid, and they do that fucking whore humor shit. Uh, and I'm a pompous American, and I fucking hate Europe. Good. Good for you. Why, why can't you get these guys, Opie and is... Anthony, to replace Conan? I think they're better. Like this guy's a disaster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you got in store for to us? To replace yeah. Conan? Yeah. Why aren't you hustling? Why the fuck are you here today they, wasting her, time? Replace be... Conan? What do you mean replace Conan? He's telling adventurer yeah, stories. Yeah. Replace yeah. Conan? We gotta like replace love it. Conan or replace? Dude, I was at Letterman two years ago. I kid you not. Julianne Moore was on before these guys. Yeah. I was in the audience watching these guys, 
And they, they're good on TV. Why did you can't... wait in line? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. I absolutely did. My friend's a fan of these guys from Canada. Yeah, Jonathan, what do you got in store for us? Maybe not Conan, yeah. but what do you got? I don't know. What's your idea for the uh, Opie and Anthony show? Uh, How do we branch I, out? I think you guys should do a TV show. Hell fucking yeah, I think so. I think, I think so, too. Uh, uh, I think so, man. Uh, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm in. Hey, Ian, uh, your exclusive video is up on my YouTube channel, OP Radio. Hey, thank the you. Tiger Woods sex tape Thank you guys for us. having me. You guys rock. Everyone in Canada. Supposedly you only gave us the news and no one else, No, I'm right? not talking to anyone else. If we find else, out you, you gave good. anyone else the news, dude, you're, you're dude, done. You you're done with word. our program. Just stop done. Agents, calling. Do you done. know, the bigger done. story was the fact that you wouldn't give anybody the story. Dude, I'm a busy guy. They're calling me. What's in it for? <laughs> you know, to be the story. What the fuck do I need that for? You know, I said to get off my back. My agent told me this week, dude, you got to speak to someone. So I said, okay, I'm going to these guys. These guys have had me on this year. They've made my book number one New York Times bestseller. I said, I'm going to. They, they, they weren't greedy. They weren't phoning my agent ten times a day. No. You know, they're terrible journalists. So I gave it to them. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I, I know people out there hate you, Ian, but I, 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 hate Ian for, for, I have to say I love Ian Albert. No, yeah. I love you guys, man. I, uh, These guys uh, should uh, be in uh, Canada. In the we are in Canada. In, in, XM uh, Canada. All over. Uh, that, uh, two people listen to that. I mean, I, you guys got to be. <laughs> on might be TV. right, actually. Get these guys a TV yeah, show. Come on, man. Jonathan. I'm the testimonial. I saw them on Letterman. There was a fucking crowd outside. Julianne Morse. No, they paid attention. They were all over these guys. I could, remember that? A friend of mine. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. I got a great idea. Signs, moment. Yes. Chicks everywhere. A, chicks, a friend of mine owns a TV station in Afghanistan. I'm in. I'll go there to do something. How cool is that? Right. Can't be any worse than XFL game day. <laughs> right. Bring it all back around. Right. Bring it all yeah, back yeah. around. <laughs>